We hear what seem like outlandish predictions for silver. $85 per ounce, $600 per ounce. What about gold? We hear numbers as high as 10, 12, $50,000 per ounce. But what needs to happen for those prices to be realized? Look, guys, it's not a pleasant thought. What's going on right now in the world when it comes to the economic and monetary systems? What could happen, or should I say likely will happen, that could lead to much, much higher prices for gold, for silver, for platinum? It seems like we'll never realize the real value of the metals, right? I've been at this for almost 20 years. How long have you been at it? It feels like they just keep prolonging and prolonging, find new and more creative ways to throw duct tape, to paper over problems. Remember the banking crisis just, what, three months ago? Three of the four largest banks failed in the history of the United States. A bigger amount of banks from a dollar perspective failed during that little period we had three months ago than the entire financial crisis. And they're saying the banking crisis isn't over. But what are we talking about happening? Are we talking about an all-out dollar collapse potential? You know, I know it's hard for us. Maybe you're like me. It feels like you just like like you know there's big problems you know something big is likely going to happen but it feels like it never does well it never does until it does just ask the british empire ask people who lived in germany during the weimar hyperinflation ask people in spain when their economy collapsed and they were no longer the world reserve currency ask the dutch they held that position for a while you may have some relatives that lived during the time of the Roman Empire. Ask them what it was like when the Roman Empire fell. I guess my point on all this is like as we as we prepare ourselves, as we want to be safe with silver and gold, it may feel like sometimes we're foolish almost. We know things are really, really screwed up, but... It just seems like nothing happens. It just gets pushed along. Tech stocks go to the moon, right? The NASDAQ just goes up and up. And we sit fighting for just a reasonable price for our silver and gold. Guys, we're going to talk about something very interesting in this video. We're going to talk about this concept called a crack up boom. Have you heard that before? If you have, you may know what it means. If not, I'm going to explain it to you in very simple, easy terms. Because a lot of the top economists are talking about a crack-up boom. And that would mean skyrocketing prices and likely value, which is more important, right? Price, we measure silver and gold in dollars. We're brainwashed. Welcome to the club. We think, hey, look, I hey, this morning, by the way, the price of silver is up 10%. Woohoo! Our 10 cents. Sorry. <laughs> One day I'll be saying that up 10%, up 10 cents. Gold is fighting, hanging in there. We look at gold, we look at silver in dollar terms, but what's most important is value terms. And if this crack up boom situation materializes, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you that I think it will, that it could, right? Now there's a big but, and you know I like big buts, I cannot lie. However, the big but is it may not be a real desirable world to live in when this occurs if this occurs maybe they can keep maybe we've we've gone into a new era and the united states will rule the world for the rest of known history right we know we know things change again we just, we already covered we can look at history we can look at all the countries that have been in the same position and met the same fate. So we want to be prepared. What is a crack up boom, you might be asking? Well, I have the official explanation and it's critical and interesting what this explanation tells us about a crack up boom, which is the crash of credit and monetary system due to continual credit expansion. Okay. Do we have continual credit expansion? Uh, do we have growing mountains of debt? You can decide that for yourself. And 
price increases. Do we have price increases? <laughs> go to the grocery store. Go to the gas station. Go try to buy a house. I had a house three houses down. I'm just going to be honest with you. Supposedly, there's a contract on it for $670,000. Makes no sense to me. I think it's crack up boom time right now because I'm telling you, that's several hundred thousand dollars higher than any house in my neighborhood has ever, ever sold for. St. Louis, relative to the coast, right? Houses are cheap, right? This is a middle, upper middle class neighborhood that I live in. $670,000. I mean, I'm like, what? With interest rates where they are? This makes no sense. Okay. Now that granted, it was a rundown house that somebody bought and fixed up and, you know, painted everything white, put on, put in some new kitchen cabinets and a new front door. But nonetheless, I, you know, it just feels that way. Sorry, I digress. Okay, so it's it's due to, it's a crash of the monetary system due to continued credit expansion and price increases that cannot be sustained long term. In the face of excessive credit expansion, consumer inflation expectations accelerate to the point that money becomes worthless. Money becomes worthless and the economic system crashes, right? People wake up. And we got to feel sorry for people. Like a lot of my relatives who I really care about, especially some of my closest relatives, I'm not going to name names, that have, that have lived, let's say, 70 or 80 years, right? The banks, they always could trust the banks. They've never had a problem with the banks or guaranteed they got FDIC insurance, right? Uh, right? You know, they trust the banks. The dollar has always been valuable. It's been valuable my whole life, too. Hey, flash a couple hundred dollar bills in front of me. My eyes will light up. But, guys, the reality is we could be heading for a situation where the dollar really does poorly. Like, real, real poorly. Again, do we have uh, credit expansion? Do we have price increases? Yes. It's called a crack up boom, but it's nothing to crack up about. It's nothing to laugh about because it can create massive, massive hardships for people who aren't prepared. Now you, right? Are you prepared? Do you own some silver? Do you own some gold? Maybe? Do you own some platinum? Neil from Neil Hans Dynasty, the platinum guru, right? Coin shop Chris, our great friend. Do you own some silver? I, you know, I don't know, right? Right? I, likely we do. Likely you watching right now, you do. So you are prepared because it, when, <laughs> when or if this happens, right, the value of precious metals will save you. Ask people in Turkey who went through a little bit of a miniature crack up boom just a few months ago. There's many reports from people in Turkey. Silver and gold saved them. Where I work in the evening, the cleaning crews from Venezuela, they just came here in the last like 18 months. They'll tell me, they have told me, silver and gold saved people in Venezuela. Their eyes light up when I show them a silver round, right? They know the value. But let's, let's dig in a little bit. Let's just see what's going on, right? Are we in a situation where credit's getting out of control? Sky high debt situation. What do we have going on in our country right now? $33 trillion in debt. That's just our government, okay? $33 trillion in debt. Oh, and by the way, the government's still spending way more money every year than they bring in, so they're adding to that debt. Oh, and by the way, the interest rate they're paying on that debt is going up, up, up. Thank you for the super chat, Frodo. Awesome. Thank you. Right? The interest expense is going up. So you got the pile of debt, right? You got the deficit that's adding to the debt, and you've got the interest expense on all that debt, which is going up, up, up. That's adding to the deficit, which is adding to the debt, which is, it's a big cluster bomb. I'm going to be nice and call it a cluster bomb. Thank you, Daniel, for the super chat. Man, you guys are awesome. So do we have that? But that's not, but wait, there's more. Corporate debt right? At near all-time highs. Oh, and there's another big, massive segment of debt. It's consumer debt, credit card debt. Do you, do you have $10,000 in credit card debt at your house? Well, if you do, you're average, 
right? Consumer debt's at an all-time high. The interest rates consumers are paying on the debt is that let me tell you something about debt. It's imaginary. It's electronic, right? 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 It's unicorn fart dust. It's like uh, derivatives and everything else. Thank you, Clifton, for the super chat. Okay? Right? It's all paper. It's all imaginary. But and I heard Ray Dalio himself say this, and it really sunk in with me. All that debt, trillions, I think the world has $330 trillion in debt. Guess what? Somebody believes they're going to get paid back, and there's no way that people can get paid back. Look, here's what's going to happen, and this is when it gets scary. This is the crack up boom. It's not us. We already realize, you likely already realize, the system is unsustainable the way that it is, okay? It's not us that are going to make it scary, right? We're the ones that are kind of out ahead of the crowd. It's when everybody else, right, the people that watch the Today Show every morning, nothing against those people, it's when they wake up and realize, oh my gosh, my money is becoming worthless or my money is becoming my paper right this stuff don't you like that see right it takes <laughs> it takes one of these to get what you used to be able to get with a one dollar bill it's when my when people realize their money's becoming they don't have to realize it's becoming worthless they just need to realize it's becoming worth less right and maybe we got a touch of that over the last few years, but when more and more people wake up, and I'm telling you, guys, I know it, you may feel like, oh, this is this is never going to happen. You're the you're you're trying to scare us. You're doom and gloom. You're um, you're the little boy who cried wolf. And maybe I am right. I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have a brain that can think independently, just like you do, and I can look at the situation and look at basic mathematics, we can all do that and realize that it's almost inevitable. Now, Rick Rule likes to say, don't confuse that which is inevitable which, with that which is imminent. Thank you for the super chat again, Clifton. Man, you guys are super generous. Super chat, super generous. It helps. It goes a long way. Right now, I'm viewer supported, right? I'm, all, I'm very selective in who I will take as a sponsor. Oh, I, I am. I turn them down all the time. You've heard that story. So the super chats do help. Um, people are going to start to wake up. And when they do, let's just think about this. Think about this. You want to feel warm and fuzzy, Mr. Silver and Gold Investor? What happened a couple months ago when the banking crisis occurred, right? And it wasn't even that big of a deal. It was a big deal. It is a big deal, but they didn't make a huge deal about it in the mainstream media and the mainstream press. When just people started to wake up a little bit like, ooh, we got problems in this country, right? You couldn't buy silver. You couldn't buy gold, could you, right? I went to my local coin shop. They got a big shelf behind the counter where they keep all the tubes of silver, right? Nothing. There was nothing there. And that was just a taste, was it? Right? What happens if we go way beyond that level of awareness? If more and more people, what do you think is going to happen to your silver and gold? It's a confidence collapse. That's a big key to remember. The dollar, what's the dollar based on? We know in 1971, President Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. I think things were pretty good up to then. Americans were living a pretty good life. Middle class was thriving. Nixon took us off the gold standard. And now the dollar's based on what? You tell me. Tell me, what do you think the dollar's based on? The dollar's based on trust and confidence. And when that trust and confidence starts to get eroded and it happens and maybe it starts to happen more quickly, guys, it, it's going to be a very, very crazy time, right? At least we are mentally prepared for it. I don't think most people, I mean, do you feel like most of your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers are pre prepared for what potentially could come?
Let me know in the chat. Let me know. Hello, TNT Travels. Welcome. Hello, Karen Wilson. We love our women stackers. June 14th is International Women's Silver Day. International Women's Gold Day as well. Guys, we need to embrace the fact that there's more and more women coming in. Christy Lee. Wow. Neil from Neil Hans Dynasty. I apply the same philosophy. Grab your silver. Ab absolutely well said. Well, thank you. Ron, spell check. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Rob. You, I've been called Rob. My last name starts with B. I've been called Rob my whole life. I'll answer to either. Um, oh boy, let's get let's just cover a few a few more things. So we've got all this debt, right? We've got all these problems. What happens when we hit a problem? What happens? And, it, you know, what happens? What do they do, right? All this debt's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, and the problems become bigger and bigger. And what do they do every time? They print more and more and more. The problem is they went for quick fixes. Quick, 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 easy fixes, no pain, right? The financial crisis in 2008, even when the tech bubble burst, no pain, well, we'll just we'll just give them a little more monetary heroin. That'll take their pain away, right? And eventually, guys, the piper will need to be paid. People will want to get rid of cash. People will want to get rid of paper during this crack up boom scenario. If, and I want to emphasize if it were to happen, it's a complete loss of confidence. And when that happens, your everyday average person, you've already wanted to get rid of some of your paper, right? You probably converted some of your paper for real money, real metal, right? And when they do that, when everybody wants to get rid of their paper at once, everything will skyrocket in price. Everything, anything real will skyrocket in price. It's not going to be pretty. I'm not saying, hey, we're going to be, you know, <sighs> it'll be a mixed feeling, right? We'll be happy that we're, and we'll be, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, feeling maybe rewarded that we protected ourselves. But we don't want to see other people suffer. We don't want to see, uh, and there's going to be a lot of suffering and hardship, potentially, potentially, when this does occur. Are we starting to see it? I read this and I thought it was very, very interesting. It said activity in the real economy right now is not that good, even though prices are up. And doesn't does that feel that way to you? Like prices are up. House prices, right? My neighbor, this unbelievable sales price on this house down the street. And, you know, anything you go to buy, it's like prices are up, but the level of activity feels like it's going down. Trucking, big trucking company, Yellow, is. I, I read the headlines. I don't know the details, but considering or is going into bankruptcy, right? Um, you know, everywhere we look, we see signs that, and they're a trucking company. They move things around. They move goods and services. What does that tell us when trucking companies are having a hard time? But prices are up. Well, yeah, sure, whatever. It's going to happen fast, 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 okay? That's the thing. It's not going to happen. Who is it? Hemingway, when they asked, how did you go bankrupt? He said it, it happened very slowly, and then suddenly, boom, okay? Boom, it happened. These things don't, you know, we live in this kind of, I don't know if you feel this way, but, you know, like we live in this, and, it, and it's more frustrating to us, this imaginary world that, Everything is the same. Nothing will, you know, the United States will always rule the world. The dollar will always be valuable. Um, you know, we don't have anything to worry about. Let's just go watch Dancing with the Stars and Survivor. I actually watch that show sometimes. It's kind of, or Naked and Afraid. Sorry, that's the one we watch. I'm into the uh, nudity shows. Naked and Afraid. Anyway, um, you know, like everything's okay, guys. I'm, this th again. I don't want to go. Spain, Rome, England, Germany, the Dutch. This ha has happened. Oh, you know, I was having this discussion um, with Chris Marcus the other day, and, and it came up. I said, you know, like we think it's never going to happen, but then boom, it happens. Right? It happens. 
you know, it, and it happens fast. We got to look at history. Um, when it comes to the stock market, right? The stock market's doing great. Look, you know, all-time highs or close to all-time highs, but it's not a healthy stock market. They're saying like with the NASDAQ, right? These are like a couple companies are like lead, are, are, are responsible for all the gains in the stock market. Things are questionable out there. Now let's talk about gold and silver, okay? Because they'll do well in this crack up boom environment. However, thank you, Dean R. Good to see you. Daniel, James Berry Hill. Karen Wilson, Clifton Moberg. I hope I linked. I lit. I long. <laughs> I hope I can say this. He hopes he lives long enough to see this occur. You will, my friend. Don't forget, guys. Oh, we got a hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A hundred thumbs up. Thank you. I want to tell you something. You're a big deal. It's a big deal that you are here with me in the basement right now, wherever you are in the world. And I'm talking to you, right? We're all together virtually, literally from all around the world. We are the Silver and Gold Club. We're the Mr. Rogers neighborhood for silver and gold investors, right? You are a basement dweller. You're going to get me every day for the rest of my life. As long as my heart's ticking, I'm going to put out a piece of content for you. Please subscribe. It helps. Okay. It does help. Um, and, and give this video a thumbs up. We got 130 thumbs up. We got almost 300 people all together right now. Okay. We're important. We are a force to be reckoned with. We are the Ron's bait. We're like the Navy SEALs of the silver and gold world, right? Yeah, we're, we go from being Mr. Rogers' neighborhood to the Navy SEALs. Hello, Sassy Silver. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello, Sassy Silver's mom. I appreciate the super chat. I appreciate the support. It really does help. Guys, let's talk about, okay, the gold price has been doing well. The silver price has been doing well. When I went on this morning, right, gold is within striking distance of all-time highs again, right? <laughs> and we are in a natural, let's call it natural environment. Gold is fighting for $2,000. Let's go gold, silver, fighting for $25. Let's go silver, platinum, I believe. Neil can correct me, fighting for, let's go platinum, right? These metals are fighting and doing well, well, well in a natural environment. Let's think about that for a second. Meaning there's no big, it's just the normal natural screwed up that we already covered earlier in this video, right? All these things that could lead us to this crack up boom, but that's the new normal, 33 trillion in debt, the economy screwed up, all that, right? All it's going to take, it can, it can continue to do well just by natural forces alone. But I'm telling you, the next little event, the next big event is what can, can, can be the catalyst to move silver and gold and platinum, right, into the happy zone, the stratosphere, gold in particular, right? I'm telling you, once gold gets to a new all-time high, once gold crosses 2100 it's going to be a quick ride to 2600 US dollars per ounce gold. And yes, you can call me on that. Let me know what you think. Do you feel this? Do you feel this, that once we get gold to new all-time highs, right? Once we get to 2100 do you think the ride, the 2600, is going to be fast and furious? Matter of months. Yes, it will be fast and furious, or no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look in the, I'm gonna look in the chats. I'm waiting to hear from you. Let me know, yes or no. Hello, Altine Roy, 2400. <coughs> fast landing says yes. TNT Travel says 3K gold in 12 months. Dave says yes. Coin Shop Chris, yes. Sassy Silver says yes. Roger says only 2.2 ounces for each person. Yes, that's silver. Good point. Thank you, Roger. Domestic energy. I hope you're right, but I'm not feeling it. That's okay. Karen Wilson, yes. S Win question mark. Oh, yes, from the Vampire Slayer Forest. I'm waiting for both to blast off, says Stuart Palmer. Jam 2.1, Simper Fi. I have a lot of Marines, ex-Marines, that are members of Ron's basement, and that's awesome. 
and they're growing as well, right? I mean, what a diverse group of people we have here. We have people from all over the world. Yes, you. We have a growing force of women stackers. Yeah, and we got the, we got our own Marine Corps. <laughs> Don't mess with the people in the basement. Man, interesting. Yes, says Dennis Paul. Uh, Richard Cooper says, sorry, $25. Hello, Richard Cooper, our friend in the UK. He provides me a lot of great information from the UK. XRP, yes. Daniel, yes. C-130, Air Force. We say everything. My dad was in the Air Force his entire career. I love the Air Force. $50 silver, TNT. Dana Webb, a matter of days. Wesley Dorset, yes. C-130, hoo yes. Annie Oakley, Larry Choate, Hawkins, Hawkins. Man, you guys are awesome. Shannon Boyd, uh, retired vet, Daniel, C-130. Okay, bump, 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 Semper Fi, 2200, says the pneumistus. Uh, uh, Stuart Palmer's a retired drill sergeant. <laughs> I better be careful, man. You guys could whoop me in a second. Good morning, Ron. Yes, silver and gold heading higher soon to soar. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm both Army and Navy. Wow, you guys, thank you. No such thing as an ex-Marine. <laughs> Good point. Once a Marine, always a Marine. A lot of respect. A lot, lot, lot. Oh, let's talk about gold. This is the big one. Okay, this is one we don't talk about that often. Gold is the granddaddy of all the precious metals. All right, I know, you may want to argue that. I love platinum, I love silver, but gold is the granddaddy. Guys, there's a if you look, if you go pull up in Google, you can search gold long-term gold chart, okay? Pull it up. You'll see this. You'll see a big thing like this that looks like a cup, okay? A big giant multi-year. It started up high, went down low, and went back like a big cup. And then over the last couple of years, you'll see a little version of that on the side. That's called a cup and handle. And then Google cup and handle. Technical. I'm not a techie, right? I'm not a chart reader. I'm not saying, oh, the chart says that this will have blah, blah, blah. But I will listen to what the chart readers say. And here's the good news. Here's the good news. The cup and handle pattern is one of the most powerful and predictable patterns that you can see. And the longer period of time that it develops over, the more powerful and predictable it becomes. That's why people are saying, right, we're in the handle now. We're up there again. We've tried to break through to all-time highs three times. And usually they say after three times, it becomes very more likely it will break out. When it breaks out of that handle, you know, I don't know, talk to Peter Grandich, talk to any of these gurus that understand this stuff and and they're going to tell you that again we're not i'm not a techie i'm not giving financial advice i'm just telling you what they are saying and we like what they're saying because we know that once gold gets that up to that high level it's going to keep on going right and what's that going to do to the silver price what's that going to do to the gold price it's going to go and go and go and go. I want to make a couple quick announcements. Oh, I got a package to open for you guys. Look at this. I got something in the mail from a guy named Flaps who lives in Georgia. Georgia Flaps. We're gonna. Oh, I'm gonna show you what he uh, what he what he sent me in the mail. It's very very interesting. But I want to give you a couple quick announcements. Announcements. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for subscribing. Right? Because I do pay attention to how many subscribers I have. What's more important is that I have you, just you, <laughs> right? And that you're here with me in the basement. That's number one, that I'm providing you with some value, some entertainment, some camaraderie, right? Because guys, this is not an easy road. We are, we are not choosing the easy road. It's easier a lot of times to hang out with the herd. And we love the herd. We love people. Everybody's welcome here. But we're the ones who strayed a little way. We're like, hey, herd, hey, herd, we don't like where you're heading. We don't think that's a good place to go, right? We think the grass is better over here, so we're going to go check it out, right? So please, subscribe. Give this a thumbs up. Thank you again for the super chats. Big announcements. Let's see. Enter tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do you want me to sing?
If we don't get the 200 thumbs up, I'll start singing. You got 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll sing Tomorrow by Annie. That's even worse because the sun will come out tomorrow. Anyway, tomorrow I'm interviewing Pat Holland. He's the guy. You guys love him. If you haven't watched any of my previous interviews with Pat, he heads the Missouri Freedom Initiative. He's like one of the leaders in this movement in the United States. We have states all over, Texas, Arkansas, Kansas, Utah, I mean, you name it, states that are enacting legal tender legislation, right? What our founding fathers gave us in the United States Constitution. Think about that, right? Your right to use silver and gold is real money. Pat has led the charge in many ways and done it for nothing, right? Done it, not nothing, done it probably for the most important reason, which is his heart. So, oh, there's Pippi the silver cat. You guys want me to grab Pippi? Hold on. Come here, Pip. How'd you get down here? Come here. I gotcha. Oh. Everybody say hi to Pippi. She's never down here. I'm not letting her down here because she distracts me. Say hi. Say hi. Oh, say hi. That's Pippi, and Pippi is saying hello. For those of you who don't know, this is Pippi the Silver Cat. She is kind of part of the show. She, uh, When we got her, she was brown. I talked about silver so much, she slowly turned silver. <clears throat> anyway, Pat Holland, tomorrow. If you have some questions, anything's interest, send me an email, okay? I'm going to talk to Jorge Ginoza, the CEO of Fortuna Silver, on Monday. Jorge is a super smart guy. If you have questions for him, all right, regarding the silver and gold market, Jorge is a fourth generation miner, and he is one of the most respected figures in the silver and gold uh, industry. So if you have questions, it doesn't have to be particularly about, about Fortuna, just in general, about silver and gold, about mining, um, you know, what he thinks about silver, right? He does both, silver and gold. Let me know. I got Lynette Zhang coming up on August 1st. I'm going to be interviewing her. Yes, Lynette Zhang here in the basement. If you have anything you, and I'm going to, I really want to hit with her the, the fact, and we're so happy about this, that we have more and more women joining the silver and gold stacking and platinum stacking community, right? I'm going to I'm going to ask her if she'll like sponsor us or something for the June 14th International Women's Silver Day. Um okay, look, let, let's just touch on a few disturbing things that are going on out there right now. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I have a question? Hey guys, right now. Right now. Lynette Zhang, yes, thank you, Road Dog Media Inc. Road Dog Media Inc. Hottie Zhang, uh, when is Jorge going to get his stock price up? I'll ask him that. Trust me, I own a lot myself. So Lynette inspired me to be a, to stack silver, sassy silver. Thank you. I'm going to mention that to her during uh, during my interview with her. Okay. Uh, Ron, practice your Spanish. <laughs> yeah, no, he, Jorge speaks pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Hey, you guys love Pippi. I don't know where she is now. You'll probably see things flying around here in the basement. Pippi is uh, an energetic little girl. I'll put it that way. Hello, Pat Holland. Annie Oakley likes Pat. Yes. All right. It's a hard knock life. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wait a minute. We're only at 188. Thumbs up. You guys only have a few more minutes, and I start singing The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You don't want to hear that, okay? You don't want to hear that. So what do you think? What do you, you know, the economy in the United States, it's doing so great. I'm sure you're just thriving, right? If you're a middle-class American, right, you're just feeling richer and richer than ever before. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure you are. Right? We know the economy, the activity level is going down, down, down. Then, on top of that, listen to this. This gets interesting. 37 million student loan borrowers. 37 million. Okay, and if this is you, I'm sorry to hear that. We'll soon restart paying back their loans. This is the equivalent to a 4 or 5% pay cut for those people. Yeah, they haven't had to pay... Their student loans for like three years, and they're going to have to start paying them again. And they're saying that for 37 million, that's a lot of people. And those are working people. 
that they are going to be basically experiencing a 4 to 5% pay cut. Uh, the return of loan payments will take more of a bite out of many borrowers' budgets than a single year of dramatic rises in inflation. It's interesting. More of an impact than inflation. Um, from December 2021 to, to December 2022, so during the year of 2022, the income of a typical U.S. household decreased on average by 1% when adjusted for inflation. Oh, okay, yeah, great. You know, things are nasty. Let's circle back, pop, crack up boom time, right? Right? Like, scary situation in the world, just based on what's going on in the United States. I forgot to mention something very important about that to you as well. Not only... Not only do we have it just internally, do we have problems? Think about this. Factor in the geopolitical, uh, the geopolitical situation in the world, which is more tenuous right now than any other time in history. We know the bricks, right? The yellow brick, golden brick road coming up on, uh, coming up right here in August 22nd. What are we here? The night, one month. We're going to hear about a gold-backed currency by the BRICS countries. And and we now have three. I just want to touch on three countries quickly that are also going to join the BRICS and read this to you because it's very interesting. Just three. And there's like 41 other countries that either are joining BRICS or are considering it. Argentina. Argentina has taken significant strides towards joining BRICS. In particular, Argentina has pushed de-dollarization efforts, de-dollarization efforts by ditching the U.S. dollar for the Chinese yuan. Okay, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you a quick story. You may think, oh, Argentina, whatever. I spent a week in Buenos Aires, me and my good friend, Little Ricky. Okay, I've been friends with Little Ricky since the third grade. All right, and this was like, what? I don't know, 12 years ago, 14 years ago, we went to Buenos Aires. Uh, he had some free flights from his job, and he brought me along, and we went down there. Guys, Argentina is a beautiful country. It's a huge country. Buenos Aires is a metropolitan. They call it the Paris of South America, right? These aren't, I mean, we. I think in America, we just think, oh, these are like, you know, little whatever. No, these are big, big countries, right? And they know, right? Argentina, uh, Fortuna Silver has a big gold mine in Argentina. They, these, these countries know the value of precious metals. Iran. There was a report last month that Iran was in attendance at a BRICS foreign ministers meeting in Cape Town, South Africa. They too have taken steps towards joining BRICS, including submitting an official application. Additionally, the Chinese ambassador to Iran, Cheng Hua, Cheng Hua, said that China supports Iran's entry into the BRICS. China supports Iran's entry into the BRICS block. Hence, Iran already has a foot in the door at the BRICS alliance. Again, we think Iran. I've never been to Iran, but I've studied Iran. Have you studied Iran? These, it's actually a rather advanced from a technology perspective, an economic perspective. It's, you know, these aren't like little nothing we need to worry about countries. These are big countries. The United Arab Emirates. Oh, they make, they produce something that's pretty critical to the world. Like the, what's the lifeblood of the world economy? Do you know what it is? It's oil. Look around you right now. This microphone is not possible without oil. The plastic, everywhere you look. Oh, Susie just yelled at me. We got 200. All right, that's it. 200. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, I don't have to sing tomorrow for you. Uh, oil's so important. Uh, the United Arab Emirates' inclusion in BRICS expands the alliance economic potential, giving power to challenge the United States dollar. Guys, everywhere we look, we see signs that things are going to get very, very interesting. Oh, I forgot to open this package. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. I'm not leaving you. You can still see me. All right, I'm back. You're here. I got a package. This is hilarious. 
Flaps. I always protect everybody's personal information, so I blacked out. His first name's Flaps. What a nice guy. You know what he sent me? Yeah, I'm, I cheated. I opened it already. But this is really cool. It's from Atmex. It's like a silver foil. I just love silver in any and all forms. I want to say thank you, Flaps. It's a one gram. I guess this is silver foil. And um, you know what? I'm going to keep it here with all the other silver items that you guys have sent me because they all are very, very touching and greatly appreciated. Let's go down here. What have I missed? Thank you, Susie. Last call for Super Chats. Yes. Dan, everybody says hi, Susie. Look, on many levels, this is not possible without Susie. Um, she keeps me in check, and she does a lot of things to support the channel, and I know she's on the Super Chat right now, so why don't we all say, we love Susie? I think she would like to see that. Don't we all like to know that we're loved, you know? And look, when you come to the basement, right, I'll say it. I love all the people that come in here. We've got such an awesome group of people um, that are enthusiasts about silver and gold. I mean, that's... You know, that's only part, though, of what brings us all together. And, um, you know, it's a special thing. I want you to know how much I appreciate it. Um, you know, community is important. Being part of a community. When you're here, you're a basement dweller. We are the Mr. Rogers neighborhood for gold and silver enthusiasts. Sorry. You know, we want, we want to learn more. I don't know everything. You know as much as I do, right? We take turns going down the path, right? People point things out to me, you, all the time, that are so, so helpful. You guys are awesome. Hey, look, right there, those are my tennis shoes because I'm taking my daughters to Six Flags. We're going to ride the Screaming Eagle roller coaster. I got to get going. Uh, you know I will see you soon. If you have any questions, always please email me. My email address is in the description of every single video. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Neil Hans Dynasty. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris, for helping. Thank you, Susie. And I'll see you guys soon. Oh, hey, hey Mark Razor, Super Chat. Here's the Susie. Uh-oh. She's going to want her cut. <laughs> Thank you, Dinar. I'll see you guys soon. See you, Sassy Silver. You guys take it easy. Okay? Bye-bye.